super fans. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Don't waste my motherfucking time! I just realized we're going to totally ruin this episode for our super fan. <laughs> she's going to go download it and be like, I know all of this already. She's going to say, I usually really enjoy this, but this week... That productive hour has been replaced with two ignorant, <laughs> uninformed, ill-advised, self-deprecating morons ranting about opinions they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. Woo! Our goal is to convince you that where we hail from, just outside Washington, D.C., is a, not just a city of politics and scandals, but one brimming with art, music, and culture. It's impossible that, as that may seem. So, listeners, now that you know why you're here, I'm Keith, and across from me is my co-host, Victor. Victor, why the hell are you here this week? Uh, have you come across these daily odd compliments? No. On the internet? I, I think I, uh, yeah, any woman that comes across me probably gives me them. <laughs> so, so this whole page is probably shit that you've said. Hey, Keith, you're but, not uh, as fat as most. They're actually really charming. Like, this one is... Um, you make me happy when skies are gray, but also when they're not gray. And that includes when skies are orange, which typically means that there's a tornado coming. And that's not something to be happy about. <laughs> no, that is it's very specific <laughs> right? And, and lengthy. Yeah, you're, you're so you're... hot. You could melt the homes of polar bears. But I know that you wouldn't do that. And even if you did, the polar bears would understand. The last part's not true, by the way. The polar bears would be upset. Do they have homes? <laughs> uh, the ice caps. Do I they live? Do they live in ice? I would think they'd be in a cave. Are they in an ice cave? Well, they dig a little burrow in the they? snow to oh. birth they, their young. Like an igloo? No, a like, hole. It's a, a hole. Just a hole. They don't make a structure. They just dig a hole. You don't know them. Like I know. <laughs> Obviously you don't because you're asking me questions. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. This is you know very what, good. What? When someone calls you ugly, you should yeah. say, go fish. Because if they're going to say something stupid, so should you. That's easy for me. <laughs> I can totally do that. I don't even have to use that one. I could come up with a long list of stupid things to say. Well, I have a long list of odd compliments, which yeah. I will be uh, slowly unleashing throughout the show. Okay. So, um... Why are you here? <laughs> You're ugly. <laughs> Go fish. <laughs> Listen to our podcast. <laughs> I am here uh, for the polar bears as somebody apparently is so hot they can melt polar bear uh, houses or homes. I have found out some disturbing <laughs> news. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this. There's a new iceberg in the world right now. Yeah. An iceberg. Is it like an iceberg emoji? Yeah. Iceberg lettuce? Yes. No. An actual like Titanic sinking iceberg has split off from uh, Antarctica. There's an, a sea ice shelf. It has split off and become its own iceberg that is now free floating and could end Sweet. up anywhere. An ice shelf. I yeah. got plenty of shit that I can put on it. Exactly. Here's the interesting thing. A lot of people uh, know that icebergs can be quite large. This one is the size of Delaware. Wait, are you serious? Delaware. You remember that movie, The Day After Tomorrow? Delaware. The Day After Tomorrow, Dennis Quaid makes a big deal when yep. he's addressing Kong or whoever it is, the, the, the weather people. And he's uh -huh. like, the last section of shelf, of shelf ice that broke off was the size of Rhode Island. Yeah. This is that was a disaster movie. That was an end of the world movie. Yeah. And we just out, what, Delaware's like three times the size of Rhode right. Island. Rhode Island is like, you're kind of big. Um, so <laughs> yeah, this thing is, wow. I, that's, that is amazing to me. So here's the thing that's really fascinating is that um, they measured this by having a satellite photography and they looked down and then they measured the huge chunk of ice that split off from this ice shelf and that is the size of delaware it is also what many people call just the tip of the iceberg god damn it that's right 10 percent of the it. iceberg is what we see 33 percent. i hate you so much uh, it's, they say 10 percent. whatever your mom most is of the iceberg is not <laughs> visible right the part that is visible is Delaware. Keith, is this the true story or did you make this all up just so you could drop that pun? Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> it is estimated to be 1.1 trillion tons of ice. Do you know how many margaritas that is? <laughs> That's at least 
One point one <laughs> trillion margaritas. Yep. One ton margaritas. A ton of ice for each one. One ton I hope you margarita. Like them frozen. Um, so wow. speaking of one ton margaritas, uh, we have a lovely lady here in the studio. <laughs> Elena, you are basically one of our biggest fans, which worries us about you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Because you have no taste. Oh. <laughs> hey, no, no. If ninjas captured you, I would spend all of my free time <laughs> training to be a stellar ninja. Yeah. Which might take some time since right. I'm very far from being that. But I want you to know that I would eventually rescue you. Aw, if Liam Neeson doesn't get me first. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, one can hope. He's king of the ninjas. <laughs> Literally, in that Batman movie, he's king of the ninjas. So at the end of every show, I desperately plead with all of you lovely people who are listening right now uh, to please uh, share our posts and follow us and retweet us and share the show on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of those places. Elena is one of the people who actually does it. Yeah, all of the rest of you suck. So that's why you're not on the show, and she is <laughs> so cool. Nah, 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 boo boo. <laughs> Stick your head and doo doo. <laughs> and so uh, we thought it would be fun to bring somebody on who uh, is familiar with the show and enjoys the show, and get a sense of who the people are that actually are consuming the thing that we do every week. And you seem like the uh, most likely candidate, and maybe most willing candidate. We might have asked others and they said, no, <laughs> not at all. No. Um, you again. Go away. So, uh, Elena, why are you here this week? Well, as you know, I enjoy wasting an hour of my time every yeah. week listening. But this week, I, I have so much time that I decided to wait waste two of them <laughs> one being here and you know earlier you said that you might disappoint me because i already know all this stuff yeah. but i actually really like to hear myself talk so i think i'll even enjoy <laughs> listening to this one even more for some reason with this episode i'm really turned on yeah. <laughs> that guest seems remarkably attractive <laughs> Her guests are amazing <laughs> definitely getting better the more i listen to this show <laughs> That's excellent. We've also heard, um, we were talking a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I thought this was an amazing fact. You are going into boxing. Yes. I have been training for about six months yeah? with an awesome coach. His name is Jeffrey Young. Okay. And um, he's just like, I think the, the most important thing about boxing is having a good coach. Yeah. Um, and, and not getting punched in the face. That too. That's, we're that's, working on that one. That's <laughs> number one. And then second... Coach, yes. I would say. <laughs> yeah. And they correlate. Yeah. I mean, somewhat. I can see how they're related. But first and foremost, it's going to be don't get punched in the face. And then if I have a shitty coach, I'm like, eh, I can make do. <laughs> yeah. We actually spend a lot of time of him punching me in the face with some foam. Right. So that I would move my head. Oh. And we're getting there. I usually call that a date. <laughs> <laughs> Is that. No, that was mm -hmm. that's have the to line. have a conversation with the mistress of destruction here. <laughs> uh, so that's very cool. And you have a bout coming up. Yes. Um, my first official fight is going to be in August um, 11 on August 11. I don't have all the details yet. I just found about it, found out about it today. OK, great. But you can be sure that when I share this episode and tweet it and blast it out on all my social media, I'll probably, you know, toot my own horn a little bit. You should. And, and <laughs> when you find out more, let us know. Uh, anybody who's listening, go check out our Twitter and our Facebook and we'll let you know uh, when and where uh, that bout is happening. Um, I also heard that you're you're pretty active with the Wolf Trap Animal Rescue. Is that right? Yes, that is right. Will you stop being a better person than we are? Stop yeah, it. It's uh, not hard. It's not hard. I was just going <laughs> to say it out. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, Wolf Trap Animal Rescue is a great rescue where they uh, um, they save a bunch of puppies from shelters um, before they're about to get put down. Oh. And they're always looking for volunteers to help with the transports and to foster the puppies before they get adopted. Well, we'll talk more about that a little later in the show. In the meantime, you're going to participate in your first ever weather report. Dun, dun. Oh, it's got its own theme music. Though. Yes. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Explain so. how this works, despite the fact that she's intimately <laughs> familiar with how this works. For our first time listeners out there, who there will be many because this is going to be the best episode ever. There are also last time listeners. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, this is bullshit. No, no. This show was so good, they can't possibly beat it. That's true. 
But uh, this is the weather report, where you decide whether or not the things we say at you should have been news. We have scoured the internet for hilarious awesomeness, ridiculousness, and we're going to throw it all at you. And you're, you get to decide whether or not it should have been news. Yes, whether Open or her not. up, Keith. Um, all right. So as you may be aware, we have a brand new administration that uh, came into office just a few months ago. Um, one of those gentlemen, uh, which I use loosely, is um, our vice president, Mike Pence. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there is a picture of Mike Pence uh, that is uh, uh, there's a photo of him touching a piece of NASA equipment, which is clearly labeled do not touch. I saw that. The sign <laughs> is <laughs> like it's bigger than the thing. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. So people like basically came at him like, what the hell are you doing? Like that literally says, don't touch it. And that's the only thing you're doing. And he responded apparently uh, with sorry at NASA. This is obviously on Twitter uh, at Marco, Marco Rubio dared me to do it. <laughs> He's like a kindergartner. Like, yeah. like, did you eat this cookie? Uh, he made me do it. That guy made me do it. Um, so I had to eat come the out from the bushes and talk to us. Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's um, he's fifty eight years old, and uh, he went with the double dog dare defense. That's <laughs> right, right. strong, very the next in line as the successor of the leader of the free world. <laughs> God forbid if he shoots off, like if he takes over and nukes somebody and then he's like, Marco guy, Rubio. <laughs> yeah, he's, he was like, I bet you won't touch that button. What is that supposed to do? He double dared me. Yeah, what is, I had to touch he the triple button. triple dared Dude, you can't triple stamp a double stamp. Put that down. <laughs> <laughs> so it's childish. Yes. But is it news? Is it? I think it is. Um, It's an accurate representation of, you know, who is leading us. (laughs) And the people should know. Yes! (laughs) Off to an early lead. Tally one for Keith. Before I open up with this news story, I just want to say, if you look up beautiful in the dictionary, (laughs) there will be an inaccurate description of you because dictionary is not a picture book. Don't be stupid. Anyway. (laughs) So, uh... One of our one of my favorite things Not on this news. show. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> one of my favorite things on this show is uh, people getting stuck in locations that are hilarious, uh, particularly thieves. This guy was the opposite of a thief, actually. Maintenance man gets stuck inside an ATM and slips me and slips help me notes through the receipt slot to get out. There's apparently a room behind the ATM for maintenance. And uh, the thing, he got locked in. It locks from the outside. And uh, since it's such a thick, you know, defensive structure or whatever uh, in the side of a bank, nobody could hear him. He's screaming at the top of his lungs and people just drive to drive by, to drive through whatever. Yeah. So uh, drive, he, by ATM. drive by ATM. Drive by ATM. 20 bucks, bitch. But uh, he, instead of giving people their receipts, he put a little note. It said, uh, please help. I'm stuck in here and I don't have my phone. Please call my <laughs> boss at and it has a phone number. There. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck in a fortune cookie factory. Right, right. Please <laughs> help me out. So uh, eventually, no, like a whole bunch of people didn't actually do anything. Eventually, somebody called the police and be like, do you hear that? <laughs> There's a little voice inside my head screaming, let me out. Here's the question. Oh, no, that's the ATM. <laughs> this this leaves the 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 door open, uh, no pun intended, to wondering. You how, totally intended. No, it. I didn't. How many other people are currently trapped in ATMs? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, they're good. we may not even have automated tellers. It might just be people in boxes who are handing us receipts, and we didn't know it for all this time. They just have tiny people pushing money out and going here. Ah. And now it's all that much more newsworthy because now, because of what Keith said yeah. and what this says, it's a cover-up. You'll never see this again in your life that somebody's stuck in the ATM. It says ATM machine. <laughs> Motherfucker. It can't be news just because of that. Uh. <laughs> well, did uh, my question is, were people just like, hey, new talking ATM? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Help me. Okay, here's my card. <laughs> You're welcome, Let ATM. me out. Let me out. Well, if I, let me put in my pen. Right. I can get you out sooner. Right. Money. It's the money talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do say money talks. <laughs> so it's idiotic. 
It's apparently a one-time thing. It's, and not, it's not advised. <laughs> Is it news? I'm I'm sorry. No, it's not. You're not so- I even complimented you. <laughs> I even is, complimented you. It is not news. It is just the world's smallest apartment. And you aren't. You are not someone I pretend not to see in public. And you still didn't give me news. Oh, I'm <sighs> sorry. Wait. So when you pick these, you you pick them f- feeling like it's going to be news. Of course. Ah, okay. <laughs> just just wondering. Ouch. I, uh, ouch. <laughs> What people don't say about that particular story is that guy actually was living in that ATM and thought that he had to just pay rent to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> all Here's the time. your rent. Here's yours. Um, all right. Next up, I um, would like to read you a little note that was left behind. Uh, farmer came home uh, to find this uh, note uh, left on his uh, door. It said, oops, sorry, we missed each other, but feel free to call me on 101 so that we can dus- discuss a deal. Love a lot. TVP. XX. T- TVP. TVP. I feel like that ends with police. Yeah, that's the uh, Thames Valley Police. <laughs> okay. Uh, which I believe is in uh, Oxfordshire, which is not how you say that. I'm sure it's Ox- Oxfordshire, probably, if you're in the UK. I would imagine. Um, you have in, nice teeth. In <laughs> England, that's why I can't say it. And uh, the Oops, reason sorry. that they left the note is because the farmer's farm had been dug up based off of a tip that they got that it was a cannabis plantation, which it was. <laughs> <laughs> so they came and raided his farm yes. and left him a note that said, Ta-ta! Sorry we missed you. Give us a call. <laughs> Police. <laughs> that guy shit <Wow>. himself. <laughs> that happened to a friend of mine in um, in West Virginia, actually, uh, in the mountains up near Martinsburg. He, uh, he came home one day. He was growing uh, pot in, in this field behind his house. Yeah. He came in. He came home. All the plants were gone, and there were uh, helicopter landing tracks. Oh! <laughs> yeah. So they came down, they landed, they took everything, and they rolled out. And then you just never go there again. You just you, you just shut your mouth. <laughs> you walk you walk up, and you go, oh, wrong place, and just keep walking. I meant to go that way. I'm hiking. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to be anywhere but here. And I bet they were in the bushes just watching him as he as he was like, doo, 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 just going to pick up shit. Like, <laughs> they're like, oh, that's the best part. I love watching that. <laughs> they don't even try to catch him. They just, they're just there <laughs> yeah. for the show. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it was uh, very uh, well mannered of them. And um, they even put XX on there. I know. Those are hugs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I thought, no, those are kisses. Hugs are, are the O's, right? Mm hmm. X are the kisses. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so it was very polite and well-mannered of them. Uh, was it news? I think, you know what? I am going to say it is news because it's important for people to know, you know, if you oh, if you have a cannabis farm, yeah. just pretend you're not home. <laughs> <laughs> they knock on they'll the door. just leave you a note. I'm stuck in an ATM right now. <laughs> I think that's helpful information. Yeah, I yeah. suppose that's reasonable. <laughs> All right. Public notice. <laughs> so you know, people. So you know. Yes. All right. Well, uh, you remember how we were trying to uh, 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 sell off parts of the like pl- plots of land Perfect. on the earth? Nailed that whole section. Yep. <laughs> you want to try again? Nope. <laughs> Google Earth uncovers <laughs> resident's message to his neighbor uh, left in his field in his backyard. It says uh, a hole, and there's an arrow pointing at somebody's house. <laughs> it's it's uh, big enough that you can see it by, from like Google Maps and stuff. And uh, so this showed up on July 13th. Washington state's uh, Washington state residents insult against the neighbor has gone globally viral thanks to Google Earth. So what did they make it out of? Do you it's, know? It's uh, wheat, I believe. They planted wheat in the shape of a hole. No, 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 no. It's it's cut. Oh, they cut. Oh, so they didn't... so they only like oh. they cut down, or maybe it's like just tall grass or something. But it looks like wheat from here. Anyway, so essentially, it's looking the, at it from space. It's the most <laughs> offensive uh, crop circle, is what you're saying. Right, right. <laughs> Either that or aliens are really getting sick of it. Like, you know, <laughs> right. Stop fucking harvesting my shit. Right, and making this, art. This guy probed our asses, asshole. Right. <laughs> I want to know what this guy did to to deserve being. Uh, 
what is that? When when Britain it's liable to be, yeah, to be libeled <laughs> from space. Yes. Or at the very least from 20,000 feet. Space libel. That is a new one, I think so. So it, uh, is it a new trend or is it news? I would say this one's news. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this one. Google Maps, you know, just Google Maps catching anything fun, I think, is news. It's always interesting. There's yeah. that naked lady in Colorado, that missile being fired in Arizona and blah, blah, blah. I think that, they, they found Now there's someone. an asshole in uh, yeah. <laughs> Washington. At some point, somebody's going to be like, call Mary for a good time and then a phone <laughs> number on a mountain somewhere. See? See? So this yeah. sets a precedent. Exactly. Um, all right. So that's going to be hard to, uh, to uh, go up against, I think. But uh, let's see. So... Um, First thing you need to know, New Zealand has motorcycle gangs. Good that, to know. That it, is a fact. It see, is an adorable fact. We were talking about like the various names for groupings of animals. Mm -hmm. So it is it's actually called a tower of giraffes. It's mm -hmm. more than two giraffes. Sure. A murder of crows. Yeah. A motorcycle club is actually a group of ash nut trees. Ash nut trees. A motorcycle club of ash nut trees, yes. Is this a specific to New Zealand motorcycle club or just anyone? <laughs> In oh, New Zealand, sure they're called a Kiwi of motorcycle ruffians. <laughs> was, yeah. Ruffians. <laughs> yes, that's what they're called. <laughs> there we go. I'm pretty certain that's what they're, the official title. Anyhow, onto the story. It seems that three gentlemen from the Mongreal mob, Mongreal mob, ran out of gas while cruising through the wrong neighborhood. It was not their turf. Uh, so they knocked on the door, and the guy who answered happened to be the member of the rival gang. <laughs> oh, convenient. <laughs> So instead of gas, the mongrel mob got bloody noses oh, man. and a stolen car. I thought this was going to be like, like uh, you know, the famous New Zealand politeness. You thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be Canada. Like I Romeo and Juliet. Like they come together, the Montagues and the Capulets. No, I was That's thinking like, tough. Can, oh, you ran out of gas? You're Oh, you're the rival. Mm. Mm. You better get out of this neighborhood. Here's some gas. Have a delightful day. You know? Right. <laughs> you cheeky little bastard. <laughs> right. Here's like, some gas. Or like the polite scorn of a New Zealander, you know? I think it would have been way better if they just poured it on them and lit it. <laughs> like, wow. That's you, very... You got some gas That's now. straight up American. Yeah, it that's, is. That's Detroit right uh -huh. there. That is uh, Ashwood <laughs> type of <laughs> motorcycle gang. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right. So it is um, not advisable. That's for sure. Is it news? Sorry, Keith. I'm going to go with no on this one. So cool. <laughs> oh, I was on such a roll. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's because you're tacky. And I hate you. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just going to... The title of this one's great. Sex robots <laughs> could be used by the elderly to help them overcome anxiety and erectile dysfunction. That's absolutely news. <laughs> Don't even continue. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> All right. On. <laughs> no? Oh, we're going to go through. Now, pensioners could use robots for sex therapy as machines become increasingly lifelike in the next 50 years. I'm thinking this is definitely, definitely spearheaded by the J Japanese. You know, this could be a different headline, though, as well. It could say, machines use old people to relieve stress. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm just saying. <laughs> the word sexual healing is, is are mentioned here. Uh, but yeah, performance anxiety for the elderly could be potentially treated and cured by really sexy robots. That's, you... that's the technology we're looking at. For the yeah. near future. Performance anxiety. They're talking about the, the elderly having that, right? Because if I'm a sex robot and I have to fuck an old person, <laughs> I'm going to have some anxiety <laughs> about that. But right? is is the anxiety really what's, you know, the problem for the elderly in this situation? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. They might die. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the anxiety if the is. If the robot, <laughs> right. The robot's too sexy. It, it right. just start kill Maybe that's the plan. Maybe we're just trying to kill them off. Right. We do have a lot of baby boomers. Got to do something with them. So it's innovative mm -hmm. and likely irresponsible. But and is it news? Yes. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Even though robots terrify me, um, yeah, I'd want to know where we're headed. Yeah. <laughs> but think about all the money we'll save in healthcare. She mm -hmm. said from, head. <laughs> from murdering <laughs> sex robots. Uh, all right. Uh, next, uh, but not least. Uh, so uh, the latest Silicon Val Valley ho housing idea. So you have to understand Silicon Valley is, is quite popular. 
uh, you may have heard of it. This is where they do all of the uh, startups, Facebook, all of these types of things. Well, probably uh, the problem is, is that there are so many people there because there are so many jobs and high paying uh, tech field and everything like that, that they don't have a lot of places for homes. Home prices are skyrocketing. Luckily, they're very creative and they've come up with a new idea. They are going to change a landfill into housing. So you can live on garbage. That sounds really smelly. Uh huh. It's a six point seven billion mixed use complex with sixteen hundred units of housing across the street from the stadium there. Um, but it is also just a dump. Yay! <laughs> Quite literally. Yeah, dude, your house is a dump. No, yeah. no, I mean it. It's like it's literally a dump. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's going to be uh, two hundred forty acres atop of what was the Santa Clara all-purpose landfill. There will also be a golf course and a BMX track. Or no, now oh, uh, yes. that's jump over now. the baby diapers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's uh, nothing smells like home, but is it news? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say that's pretty newsworthy. <laughs> that new home smell. <laughs> it smells a lot like old home smell, oddly enough. Yeah, something to think about before moving to Silicon Valley. <laughs> but hey, if you're a hoarder, that's your true. job's done. Mm hmm. You uh, just put up some walls and you're good. That's true. With if there's enough like medical waste, your Silicon Valley house could be on silicone. There you go. Yeah, it yeah. might be... develop superpowers. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's how it happens, isn't it? Exposure I... to toxic waste. I usually or used baby diapers mm -hmm. or just luck. <laughs> uh, so, all right, next up. So, uh, holiday. Holiday, holiday maker <laughs> goes to extreme lengths to keep a hold of his beer on flight by checking it in. So uh, he doesn't, he's got a beer in hand. What? And yeah. apparently he doesn't want to lose it or have to throw it away because it's too much to chat to take on board. So he decided to forego checking his bag and he checked his beer instead. So on the conveyor belts when he arrived at his destination four hours later. Yeah. He uh, received like this little can of beer with a barcode wrapped on it. Just tumbles oh. out. He picks it up and that he's you know, well. I guess I'm here. So here's the brilliant part, right? Is that it went in the belly of the aircraft, uh -huh. and the aircraft's at like forty thousand feet, which mean it probably arrived ice cold. That <laughs> uh, could be. I'm just saying that's kind of smart. Yeah. So, but, but next time you need to cool a beer, yeah. don't put it in the refrigerator. I Buy meant... a plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be at least a four hour flight. That's like the, uh, was that the Rube Goldberg machine? It's like that, but for cooling a beer. Right. It's like, the I longest, need... most convoluted process ever. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh shit. Party's going to start soon. I better get to the airport, you know? I can't afford any ice, so I'll get a plane ticket. <laughs> Yeah, but no it, luggage. You might have to wait a little bit to open it. <laughs> it might get a little warm by then. <laughs> That's true, because as it tumbles down the conveyor belt, it's gonna be all foam. Yeah, I mean, you've I've seen how how they handle the luggage back there. Can you do that with a keg? I'm wondering if he had had like five friends, could they have just chipped in and for a six pack? <laughs> yeah, you could you check know? a whole six pack, right? Because it, it's by weight. No, but each of it? them checks one beer. They just, <laughs> yeah. well, might as well just keep them all in here. Yeah. Perfect. No, I think that this, if he didn't already, did he leave the bag? That's the question. What happened to his bag? He didn't pack one. Oh, okay. He showed up at the airport with the beer in hand. They were like, it wasn't even like, you know, it's one thing like you're walking around sipping your beer. It had to be closed, obviously. You I, can't just ship a can. I wonder if anyone's done that like with a knife. You know, when they like go through security and they're like, we're going to have to confiscate that and be like, oh, let me just check it. Yeah, just right. the knife. I've seen people do that with like <laughs> packed packed swords and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is one of my checked bags. But All right. the beer is uh I don't know if that's clever. So I'm uh, the reason I picked that one is because I'm completely undecided as to whether this guy's brilliant fucking moron or absolutely brilliant. I can't decide. Uh so it is a brand new way to travel, but is it news? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I have no idea you could check beer. <laughs> a beer. A one beer. I've seen people check cases of beer, ship that home. Yeah. But one. Well, that one is all can. we have this week for the weather report. Adam, how do we do? You're both equally useless. God <laughs> well, damn it. I'll take that. No, I'm high. not going to take that. I'm going home. You have to take it. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> 
So thank you for all your help with the weather report. We couldn't have done it without you. Uh, we could have, but it wouldn't have been as good. Actually, we're actually very talented. So uh, <laughs> where Thanks are those, for coming. Where's <laughs> place? Yeah. Where are those compliments when we need them? Uh, I, I, oh, trust me, I got them for days. Let's see. You're more fun than a rope swing on the elbow of a dinosaur. And I know what you're thinking. That doesn't sound fun at all. In fact, that sounds quite dangerous. Yeah, well, last time I checked, you weren't a dinosaur safety technician. So why don't you go... You know, find us a rope swing. <laughs> and a dinosaur. All right. So we found out some really interesting things. First of all, uh, as everybody has found out, you are a uh, officially a super fan. We've we've deemed that so. Uh, why? <laughs> That's my first question. Why? Yeah. Well, Solid question. I do learn a lot of fun facts that... We're educational! <laughs> We're educational! <laughs> we can officially be... We can be a nonprofit. <laughs> CBS. We're gonna get tax breaks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where else was I gonna find out? You can literally check a can of beer. Yeah, that's true. There's <laughs> probably that's very not useful. <laughs> <laughs> not one of those things that would come on after GI Joe. Like now, you know, <laughs> it's the. We should just have like a a, a ticker. Right. That goes by at the bottom of the uh, of the, the screen. audio. Uh huh. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, when you click on the video yeah. for mm -hmm. Facebook, yeah, an audio ticker. Yeah, an audio ticker. I like it. <laughs> or it's just like somebody's quiet ramblings in the corner. <laughs> I just, I, I really like turkeys. They're just amazing. <laughs> Did you know that? Hey, it's got to be fun facts quiet. for the ticker, man. Come on. Oh, Nasdaq's up. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep I did liking see that turkey actually. is fun. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Everybody likes that. Whatever. I'm more of a ham person, but that's not the point. <laughs> so uh, how did you find out about our silly little podcast? Uh, well, I happened to be friends with Victor at the yeah. time, and he told me that, you know, there would be an opportunity to waste an hour every week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I jumped on that opportunity. I, it's, it's a good <laughs> laugh. It's a real good laugh. Good. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And uh, She was already regularly spending time with me. So. Right. So it's... It, got plenty of time. Yeah, I knew it'd be good. It's an hour of Victor in her pocket that she can take with her anywhere. There you Except go. When this started, I believe you were employed, and now you are delightfully not so. Yes, absolutely. We like to call that available. You are available for employment. Exactly. That's why yeah. I have two hours to waste this week. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. You are carefully weighing options, uh, considering contracts, uh, open for negotiations, various things like that right now, right? Yep. Well, if you were to consider a job, what type of job would it be? Well, I am con I am switching careers um, from corporate nonprofit mm -hmm. into okay. grassroots and animal um, welfare rights. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of skills that can be used towards you know grants and funding and um, just campaigning. Brilliant. So that brings us into you were talking earlier about the wolf trap animal rescue, which is something I guess you got some of these. Um, uh, desires or passions from. Yeah. Um, so you're taking kind of that stuff and moving, uh, um, taking the things you learned from the nonprofit sector and moving into helping animals like this particular organization does. What do you do um, when you're volunteering with the Wolf Trap Animal Rescue? What kinds of things do you do? Uh, well, I typically enjoy fostering. Uh, they create a, uh, they have a two week buffer um, period between rescuing the puppies and then getting them adopted to make sure that they, you know, get over any kennel cough they may have had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so basically health and, and making sure that they, I assume they're coming from difficult situations. Um, or you said to the point where they might be putting, being put down, do they rescue, um, animals that are in situations where they're being abused or anything like that as well? Or is it mainly from other kennels and other, um, uh, adoption places as far as i know their transports come from um, shelters that okay. have you know an excess of puppies and they haven't been adopted and are close to being to know. interrupt there's no such thing as excessive puppies yeah, i completely agree <laughs> <laughs> i remember there being like four dogs at your house at one point yeah yes that's true we we love dogs <laughs> clearly <laughs> like, if you were to say like an excessive amount of really smelly old dogs i'd be like oh yeah that's like a dog but <laughs> if but puppies there's only like two different levels of puppies. There's either puppies 
or a better portion of puppies. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me rephrase. Too yeah. many puppies in a small space. No, that is called layers of puppies. <laughs> That's a puppy pool. That's like a pie. You know, yeah. you did, a good pie's got layers. Yeah. I would dive into that like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. You yeah. would probably kill some puppies. Well, you then dick. we would solve the problem of too many puppies. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I know why you got him as an engineer. Yes. Points at Adam. <laughs> it's very true. Um, so that's very exciting. And then, um, uh, so uh, if people wanted to help out with the uh, wolf trap animal rescue, um, I assume that you'll give us some information that we can put up on Facebook and Twitter uh, where people can volunteer to do. What kind of jobs can you volunteer for? Well, you can volunteer to help when they get the puppies into um, D.C. or actually in areas of Virginia. Yeah. And um, you can help them clean up the puppies and you can help them set up for the um, like adoption event and the fostering event. Okay. So they like distribute puppies to the volunteers who want to foster them and um that's you can help them with social media too. You can okay. help get um you know spread the word so and help the puppies get adopted. Awesome. Yep. You also have to train the puppies to be able to play orchestra music for uh, Wolf Trap because they they do of the course. shows there naturally. Is they, are they part of the shows? I don't know. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, Remember I would that? think so. Well, There's like if... a Legend of Zelda orchestra thing, I assume, with all puppies. So, <laughs> uh, all right. Without further ado, since uh, an all puppy orchestra would be making history, let's take a, an opportunity to go back into history. This is uh, this week in history where we're going to tell you things that happened this week ish uh, in history, and then you will use uh, your great. AWH fan mind to determine what the most important historical thing is using whatever measure you'd like. So, <laughs> just watching Adam just uh, his, his, little, his little dilly in his seat. There. Right. We're back into the visual content for the <laughs> podcast. Week two of If You Were Here, it would be even more entertaining. All right, so I will start things off all the way back in 1656. Dun, dun, dun. In 1656, the first Quakers come to America. They quickly then create oil and a state and oatmeal. Oats. <laughs> <laughs> I assume. I don't know what they did. <laughs> no, uh, Anne, and Austin, uh, Anne Austin and Mary Fisher arrive in Boston, and they were immediately arrested for their Quaker beliefs and sent back to England. <laughs> it sounds familiar to a particular travel ban that we have now. I don't know what you're talking about. But I'm just saying that it's interesting that they were not allowed here for their beliefs. Well, that was before America was actually America. Sort of. <laughs> I don't know who arrested them then. <laughs> like... It was just Boston that was like, oh, God, no. <laughs> Anybody but you. Anybody yeah, but you. Yeah. No. We don't even know what a Quaker is. That sounds Send those like Manchester hooligans. They're way more fun. Why are they quaking? They must have something. Send them back. Send them back. <laughs> At the very least, they're very cold. Give them some more warmer. Uh, All right. <laughs> Well, in 1776, at the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, uh, the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, uh, yes, in Philadelphia, Jesus Christ, rang really? for the first time. I saw Pennsylvania. I was like, wait, <laughs> Philadelphia, Philly's not in Penn. No. Ah! Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, yes, Victor! Yeah. <laughs> in 1751, to commemorate the 50-year anniversary of Pennsylvania's original constitution, the Pennsylvania Provincial Assembly <gasps> Ordered a 2,000 pound copper and tin bell constructed Boring. after being cracked during a test, then recast twice. The bell was hung and they just gave up on it. <laughs> That's so they why. recast it and then cracked it again yeah, yeah. and again. It's, it just, they, okay, the crack started getting bigger and they're like, mm, mm. maybe we should just say it's pretty and this, leave it there. This is how it's meant to be. That's why it's cracked. Cause it's shitty. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wow. The Liberty Bell. Conk. <laughs> metaphorical. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's the worst part is that the thing that cracked it was ringing a bell. When your bell cracks from ringing, the only thing that the bell is supposed to do, you did a shitty job. Yeah. <laughs> if it was in transport, you'd be like, well, how often are you going to carry a bell around? Yeah. But right. Ring? But. Uh... How like it's like I bought a car, it it doesn't start. And you're like, well, that's the 
the car is supposed to take you to one place to another. If it doesn't yeah. start, it can't do that. You had one job. You know, it's such an interesting thing because it was such a different time then, right? Because if you think about it in 1776, right, it, we're they did a public reading of the Declaration of Independence. Not a short document, right? Yeah, it's it's several, pretty lengthy. Several pages. And they just, they, some guy stood up and was like, hey, everybody, uh, we wrote this. And then just read it. And people were like, this, this is good. This is, no one would do that in Philadelphia now. Like, you would throw things at that guy. Like the, if it's like this is too long and yeah, wordy. Right. Exactly. None of us are educated enough to understand it. Do you have a video? <laughs> <laughs> this would be way better if it was a movie. If you had a cat, this would work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but no, different times. Uh, all right, we'll fast forward to 1831. Nailed it. Happy birthday. Just me. Thanks. Nobody else. Happy I appreciate birthday. that. John. Scythe Pemberton. Everyone obviously knows his name. It's yes. household name. I know exactly who that is. John Scythe. Who the fuck is that? John Scythe Pemberton. No idea. I, what? <laughs> In 1888, this American pharmacist created Coca Cola. Oh. Huh. Coca-Cola. Yeah. Oh, sorry. He died in 1888. He created Coca-Cola in 1886. So he apparently so died. Killed him. Yeah, he <laughs> died pretty quick. Uh, he was full of cocaine at the time. He uh, called it the esteemed brain tonic and intellectual beverage. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. It's interesting how times have changed with that, too, because now the slogans are like, go get some, right? <laughs> Before, <laughs> like, do you I wanna... remember Bud Light came out at one point. It was like Super Bowl. Bud Light, suck one. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> that didn't last long. We're so different now. <laughs> like, like, imagine if Four Loco came out and was like, do you want to be intelligent? Four Loco. People were like, no, nope, that, uh, that sounds mm -mm. terrible. Do you want to puke a whole bunch? <laughs> right. Four Loco. <laughs> Do you want to get drunk and stay up longer so you can get even more drunk? Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. Literally, he put a thing on the uh, on the market that had cocaine in it. And what he came up with is this is going to make you smarter or not. It's got fucking cocaine in it, people. Wow, I feel so smart. I feel like doing everything right now. Do you feel like doing everything right now? Do you want to pass me another coat? This is great. Right. Is there any more coffee? Can I have coffee too? Can we mix coke with coffee? This sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Does I anybody love... want to go driving right now? Oh my God, I got so many right. ideas. I love Coca-Cola. Wait, is my mouth numb? <laughs> 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 so there you go. Happy birthday. He was born on uh, this week. In 1831. Nice job, Cokehead. Fast forward to 1850 and someone died. Um, I mean, probably a few people did in that time period, <laughs> but this one was specific. It was U.S. President Zachary Taylor. He died after eating raw fruit and iced milk. That's all I got for you. <laughs> is that the cause of death? That is the cause raw of fruit death. Raw and iced milk. Yeah. You may want to reconsider what you're doing over the weekend, because if it's anything stronger than raw fruit and ice milk, you might be a dead woman. I had I had raw. Oh, I'm not a woman. Oh, thank God. He wasn't oh either. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to die. So, wow. Uh, he was Zetch, seceded. Zetch Taylor? How many years into his presidency was he? He, he was seceded by, in office by uh, Vice President Millard Fillmore. You mean so, succeeded? Succeeded. You said yes. seceded. Seceded. He's yeah. He's Is that a seed joke? Yeah. Um. So essentially, the the long story short is he ate a ton of raw fruit and ice With and drank seeds ice in milk, it? and then the next few days had some mysterious intestinal issue. They were never. They kind of. Uh. There's a lot of like historical back and forth as to what really happened, but then like three days later he died. So it says raw fruit. Yep. There's not a lot of fruit that we eat that isn't raw. Pumpkin pie. Okay. There's one part of... Probably not a fruit, but that's not the point! Technically, yes, it is. Apple pie. <laughs> All right. I really think it was the milk. Yeah. It had to be the milk. That's probably the case. I don't know. I've eaten half a bowl of cereal. I'm like, this cereal is terrible. I'm not oh, sure when pasture is... It might be the milk. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Before I was, the, you know, I, did, I didn't die. Did I die? No. Am I dead? You might be dead. Uh, so I don't know when pasteurization came around, but it was 1850. I hope it was before that. Um, and that wasn't why the milk killed him. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yes, you. All the way 80 years you. later to 1930. Whoosh. Doing it. And doing it well. Welcome to the first World Cup on July 13th, 1930. 
France defeats Mexico 4 to 1 and the United States defeats Belgium 3-0 in the first ever World Cup football matches played simultaneously in the host city Montevideo, Uruguay. Mm, very interesting. Yes. All right, 1947. Uh, everyone's going to know uh, this one. Happy birthday! OJ! OJ Simpson. And not that many more. American Football Hall of Fame running back, sportscaster, actor. He was the head of the San Francisco street gang Gladiators when he was 13. In 1994, he was arrested and then found not guilty for murdering his ex-wife and her 25-year-old male friend, which uh, the glove didn't fit, so they had to acquit. Anyone want to guess what his first name is? Oscar? Nope. Orange Juice. <laughs> no, that, that would be the first name and middle name. Oh, uh, right. No, middle name is James. James Simpson. Anyone? Anyone? Ozymandias. Ornithal. Wow. <laughs> That's O-R-E-N-T-H-A-L. He probably had a lot of pent up rage. That's why he killed somebody. <laughs> That's so probably... many people made fun of that guy. In oh, yeah. School. No wonder you went by a, a juice. Um, so, <laughs> all, right. all right. What do you have? Let's see. In 1965, yes. the first Marine wins the Medal of Honor. Wow. Viet Cong they didn't ambush. work very hard before that, huh? <laughs> Viet Cong ambush Company A of the 3rd Reconnaissance Battalion, led by USMC Lieutenant Frank Reasoner. Of Kellogg, uh, Idaho. Yeah. The Marines had been... Nailing it. Shut up, Keith. <laughs> Marines had been on a sweep of a suspected Viet Cong area to deter yep. any enemy activity aimed at the nearby air base. And uh, he and fi uh, five-man point team, he was... I, I don't know. I think every guy is worth a certain amount of points. And sure. You have to yeah. Buy, it's yeah, like yeah. risk. Uh, they were cut off from the main uh, body of the company. He ordered his men to lay down a base of fire, and then repeatedly exposing himself to enemy fire. <laughs> That's what I would do. I had to finish that sentence. <laughs> uh, killed two Viet Cong single-handedly, wiped out an enemy machine gun emplacement, yeah. and raced through the enemy fire to rescue his injured radio operator. So nice. Like, this, we gotta give this guy somebody. Yeah. Somebody. Something. Yeah. Fancy. So, I would have gone with a car, but... Medal of Honor is pretty cool. Medal of, no, Medal of Honor is just a tiny, tiny little piece of metal. That's true. 19, so much. 1985. You uh, listened to the show quite a bit, so you might remember just a few months ago, we had a story about the debut of New Coke. Do you remember that by any chance? Yeah, so... It was about three months ago. Yeah, about three months ago, they debuted uh, in, in 1985. They debuted New Coke. Uh, this week in 1985... After much public outcry and poor sales, uh, Coca-Cola announced it's bringing back the original formula and calling it Coke Classic and didn't have new Coke anymore. Just no cocaine in it. Though. Oh, I was just going to ask. <laughs> no, I saw that look in your eye. You had that, you had that Coke yeah. twinkle. It was, yeah, that was uh, pretty sad. Um, 1993. Uh, this one is pretty good. I still actually think I remember this one. Um, Margaret Ray is arrested for the eighth time after trespassing on David Letterman's property. She had previously been arrested for breaking into his home, <laughs> sleeping in his bedroom, and wow. stealing his Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a story. Isn't that just Grand Theft Auto? <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So this you, one... You think your girlfriend's bad. All right. right? <laughs> I don't know. She's Colombian. Uh, <laughs> In 2008, Angelina Jolie gives birth to twins, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. So I go to uh, the History Channel's website. Sure. That's one of my many sources for This Week in History. You can pick on the calendar things that happened on this date. Yeah. Such as uh, something about O.J. Simpson, a very controversial uh, yeah. uh, case. Um, if you tell people where to get this stuff, then they don't have to come here for it. I'm just saying. Well, uh, well bear with me here. Bear with me. Okay. The Liberty Bell. Yeah. You know, the first World Cup. Yeah. D-Day. Of course. Uh, the Medal of Honor. All these are big things. Yeah. And then on there they have, in 2008, Angelina Jolie gives birth to twins. What kind of a fucking society do we live in <laughs> that some celebrity gives birth to something that's not really that remarkable? There, and we're like, history. But there were two of them. Oh, no. At the same time. Oh, my God. That one woman in China gave birth to like 52 kids. I know. But Are why does the History Channel feel the need to fuck? Ah, because Angelina mad. Jolie didn't have sex. That, it, it was an immaculate oh, conception got it. of twins. Yes. Yeah. That first in history. That's one better than Mary. All right. I'm not so upset with uh, what we value in our <laughs> daily society 
anymore. All right. Uh, and I think... Glad I could teach you. Yeah, appreciate it, Keith. Last in uh, our This Week in History adventure, the Barefoot Bandit is captured in the Bahamas on July 11th, 2010. What, what did he do? He uh, stole people's shoes. What is uh, quite the opposite? Oh. Actually, he gave shoes back to people. <laughs> I guess really... that would be the opposite. It wouldn't be much no. of a bandit. After a two year manhunt took people's feet. 19 year old Colton Harris Moore of Washington state is arrested following a high speed boat chase. Yeah. In the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. uh, Moore was suspected of stealing an airplane in Indiana and what? crash landing it in the Bahamas the week before. Nicknamed the barefoot bandit for going shoeless during some of his alleged crimes. The teen was a suspect in scores of other burglaries in the United States and Canada, where he was accused of swiping everything from potato chips to credit cards to small planes, boats, and cars. Wait, but no shoes? No. Sometimes he would just wouldn't wear <laughs> shoes. I don't. There are fingerprints on your toes. I don't get yeah, why they. He know. should. He should buy shoes, <laughs> steal shoes, and use them. Well, during his time as a fugitive, Moore gained a cult-like following online, with his fans viewing him as a folk hero and praising his brazenness and uncanny ability to elude law enforcement officials and nude footedness <laughs> and nude footedness. <laughs> all right so there you have it it's been a very eventful week some weeks we don't have nearly as many things because we filter out all the crappy stuff but you get to hear everything it is now your turn to decide what the most important historical fact was that you've learned for whatever reason out of these things. Da, 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 I want to say da, da, da. it's the Liberty Bell. Liberty oh. Why the Liberty Bell? 76. I really thought there was more to the crack. Nope. <laughs> it's a shitty bell. <laughs> you thought yeah. it was like a revolution that caused the crack? Or, or... something symbolic. I don't know. Like but... they built it with a crack in it to like be like, this is Liberty is flawed. Because or everybody loves cracking. You know? Or yeah. no, something cracked it and they're like, we're going to keep it in memoranda. I don't know. They, they were like, Ding. yeah, we'll keep it. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we've already spent enough on it's this. More thing. expensive to send it back oh. again. How much can we get for scrap on the net? Nah, yeah, don't worry, just hang it over there. <laughs> hang it up already. All right, there you go. The Liberty Bell and its crack, uh, as well as the um, crack cocaine. The public movie of the Declaration of Independence is the most <laughs> historically important thing that happened this week. Thank you for sorting that out for us. We wouldn't have been able to do that without you. You're very welcome. It is a very long document. Yes, it is it's a very, very long. long. It's just like the the whatever the the Da, 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 da. 57 different reasons why we're declaring independence. Like you couldn't just said because you suck and we're out. Right. right. <laughs> Remember that time where you borrowed like my car and then you didn't put gas? Yeah. That. That's one. And <laughs> there was a sign that said, don't walk on the lawn. What did you do? You walked on the lawn. NASA made a sign that said, do not <laughs> touch. And what did you do? You touched it. <laughs> we don't even have NASA yet and you're already touching things. <laughs> Um, God damn it, England. God, it's not that hard. All right, so we've made it through a majority of the show, uh, and you are relatively unscathed. How's it going? Yeah. It's going great. All right, so we have decided that we're going to uh, be uh, uh, putting to rest one of our segments here called The Five Senses. We've been doing this since the beginning, uh, pretty much, and uh, so we wanted you to be the last person uh, to be able to do it since you are our super fan. Um, so you've heard it before. You know how it works. Essentially, your memories are attached to senses. We're going to go through each of the five senses or as many as we can get through. And you tell us a story connected to one of those senses, something super memorable, either positive or negative that happens. So we will start with the most prominent of all the senses, as we usually do, the sense of sight. What is something incredibly memorable that you've seen that you'd like to share with us? A stormtrooper in the back of Victor's car. <laughs> Just like right now. <laughs> you're talking about like literally now. Your most your you're most not, you're not kidding. There's a stormtrooper in the back of my car right your now. Your most memorable sighted memory happened an hour ago. Okay, I guess I could go a little further no, back. No, that's fine. I'm good with that. <laughs> All right. That's fine. You're like a goldfish. Hey, when you <laughs> when you move in with a woman, you realize something very quickly, and that's that all of your things are stupid. Yeah. But that you have to hide your stormtrooper. Sometimes in your you just can't give them up. So I maintain <laughs> a stormtrooper is not stupid. <laughs> Why do you have it in the back seat? What you should do is put it in the front seat, and then you can use HOV. He doesn't. I, <laughs> I have thought about this more than once. His knees do not bend. Oh, oh. if you don't like him enough, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that to Daniel. Oh, fair enough. All right. 
So uh, next up, you Victor, what do you say? What do we go with? <laughs> How about uh, sense of smell? That one's the the most directly tied into memory. So smell can usually, you know, <laughs> make you remember something years later if it's just this, something similar. So. My theory is she's going to go with the smell of a stormtrooper in your backseat. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, that there was no smell. <laughs> uh, I'll. Yeah, you know, I'll go with something controversial. Uh, the smell of garbage. Oh, uh, back Silicon home in Valley, Lebanon. they love it. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> with that's that, my house. That's kind of what reminded me of it. Um, few, I think a year or two ago, Lebanon had a garbage crisis. That's where I'm from. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, uh, thankfully it's cleared up now. But what kind of like what is what is a garbage crisis? Um, the nobody collected it or right. Yeah, the people who kick up the garbage. We had one company and they went on strike, so oh. people just had to. Leave the garbage out. <laughs> Is it Lebanon about the size of Delaware? It's about the size of an iceberg, I hear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. It's like a I little think pixel. It's, I think it's a little bit bigger than Delaware. That reminds so. me when I used to uh, tour, we'd go up to a place called Mount Joy, Pennsylvania, and it was awesome because it was near Hershey, Pennsylvania. And if uh, you got to town and the, and the, uh, like the breeze was blowing the right direction. The wind was coming from, I think, the east. Ooh, you smell that chocolate. It would smell like chocolate. And you'd be like, Ooh. oh, this is the best. And then sometimes if you came into town and the wind was blowing from the west, it smelled like shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a crap shoot. Uh -huh. It was like either like, this is amazing, or why am I here? <laughs> there was no in between. Sometimes both. <laughs> yes. uh, all right. So how about the sense of taste wow. Ooh, sense of taste cheesecake cheesecake i have recently decided to go vegan what <laughs> yes why would you do this oh my animal goodness animal rights and overall that's, health yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Wow. um but yeah i disown you <laughs> <laughs> cheesecake i miss it <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> yeah if we, weren't spe if we weren't meant to eat animals they wouldn't taste as good as they do <laughs> they can you can make like to tofu cheesecake it'll be mm. awesome it'll really taste like Tofu. Plants. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll pass. Yeah. <laughs> New York plant cake. Um, all right. You could be like vegan, put an asterisk in there, exception cheesecake. Exception sure. cheesecake. Sure. I'm, yes, I'm not vegan once a week. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where I have pizza and cheesecake. Right. It's cheesecake day of the month. Yes. Um, all right. So how about the sense of touch? Ooh. A uh, sense of touch, I would say getting hit by a bike in Berlin. What? Yes. Wait, right. when did you get hit? How did you, you get hit say getting hit this in the face? This is about a few weeks. <laughs> getting hit in the face by my coach with a pool noodle. <laughs> <laughs> no, that happens too often yeah. for it to be a memory. I was, I was hoping you were going to go. <laughs> He's uh, knocking those memories out of you. I thought you were going to go puppy pool, which I was like, yeah, yeah that feels great. Yeah, no, it was... Got hit uh, by a bike? Yeah. yeah, in Berlin, fun fact, the bike lane is on the sidewalk rather than the street, and there is no indication other than bikes zooming past you. And, huh. you know, as a tourist, it's easy to forget. You yeah, hit by and a bike. They, they don't slow down. They didn't do a bell or something? For God's sakes. It, it was just a, a cluster, you know, a perfect storm. Did that... you beat the guy up? It, well, I did scream SOB to his face, so he's very apologetic. Thankfully, we were both okay. But he was German, so he didn't understand any of it. I think he did because he looked very <laughs> upset. <laughs> Wait, oh, Belgium? So he was probably French. Yeah, that is probably maybe maybe Berlin. Belgium. Berlin. Oh, Berlin. Yeah. Sorry. Berlin. Berlin, My bad. not Belgium. Yeah. Uh, so bad. sense of hearing. I know this is going to be obvious. It's just going to be our show because the show is awesome. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Timing is perfect. Thank you so much for coming on the show and being the last person to do the five senses. Coming up this week, Friday, July 21st, surprise attack at the Ante Room hey, in Washington, D.C. Saturday, July 22nd, Rhett Repco, Union Jacks, Annapolis, Maryland. Yellow Tie Guy at Metropolitan Kitchen and Lounge, Annapolis, Maryland. And Face Dancer at McAvoy's Sports Bar and Grill in Parkville, Maryland. It's a busy Saturday. Please like our post, follow us, retweet us, share us, show uh, the share the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and maybe one day you'll be on this show as well. Thanks to Kevin Eminger, to McNally22, Justin Rogers, Figmental Records, Alchemical Records, and the mysterious engineer Adam for all of their contributions. Thanks to Victor, and thanks most of all to Elena for wasting a perfectly good hour with us now and another good hour with us later. This has been another wasted hour. And if you've just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you. Chicka chicka.